The Sharp Edge on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Mazic Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to The Sharp Edge. Today I am down in Rodney, Ontario, catching up with, as usual, Greg Stewart, Mazic's agronomist. Sir, how's it going? Good, Baron. How are you? I'm doing good. Hey, now we have a guest today, Mike Miller, and we're going to talk about late nitrogen application. Greg, why is Mike on the sharp edge? So Mike's really interested in using the late nitrogen application to make intelligent decisions around how much nitrogen he needs to use for his corn crop. So it's a dribble band of 28, pretty late into the season. And uh, he likes to be able to look at rainfall and other factors to drive that correct nitrogen rate. Mm -hmm. Here's Mike Miller. Hey Mike, thanks for joining us today on The Sharp Edge. It's great to be here, Greg. All right, so let's talk about your procedure here with dribble banding UAN right down beside the bottom of the corn row. You haven't been doing this for that long. Tell us a little bit about how you got here. Uh, so I guess it was um, about 2015. At that time we were putting on uh, all our nitrogen pre-plant and on our sandy soils we were just finding uh, pretty severe nitrogen deficiencies come the end of August, September kind of time frame. Right. Um, and at that point we were running 20 inch rows in our corn. And uh, so that was kind of a difficult, difficult operation to do. So we were running a side dresser for a few years, but we since went to 30 inch rows. And uh, I guess it, the whole dribble banding thing started uh, when we bought this self-propelled sprayer and uh, basically just trying to figure out how to make the best utilization out of the right. sprayer and uh, and fine tune or nice. So did you ever go to side dressing with the tractor drawn, knifing it between the row or, or was that never a stop along the way? Yeah, so I guess we did it for about, uh, I think it was about four or five years we ran Coulter rig uh, injection into the middle of the 20 inch rows. Right. Yeah. Cool. So. so this idea of laying down 28 as a band at the bottom of the corn row, it's had lots of uh, interest. I'm not sure where the interest is quite as high today as it was, you know, six years ago. Where are you, where, what are you feeling about this, uh, this sort of late nitrogen application? Well, I'm actually pretty excited about it now. This is, uh, I guess this is our third year of doing it. And, uh, We've had actually kind of a wide range of weather the last few years. Uh, 2020 was really dry for us up until about the 15th of July. Yeah. And uh, it was actually, the first year was a pretty big learning experience, but we actually did start pulling nitrogen rates back uh, pretty heavily in 2020. And that was kind of a bonus for being able to put it on late. Right. Um, I'd say that's probably the biggest advantage for us to be able to to really wait. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kind be a little bit smarter tuning. with your rate selection if yeah. you can do it at the end of June, 1st of July, as opposed to thinking you know what it is on the 1st of June. Yeah. 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 Well, you're kind of guessing at the 1st of June, <laughs> A little right? bit. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the other apprehension about laying 28 on the soil surface is volatilization. Uh, you know, your loss of N from, from, from urea. Uh, are you protecting? Are you stabilizing? What do you, what's your, what's your procedure on, uh, on trying to stop the volatilization from those surface bands? Yeah, so we're we're running uh, a stabilizer for vol volatilization and uh, and leaching. So right. I think that's an important important aspect of this whole system is to be able to stabilize your end. So cool. So earlier you mentioned rainfall. So Bill Dean, before he retired out of the University of Guelph, put together a nice research project. Uh, I think both you and I sat and listened to him talk about it. And essentially, if he's got 115 pounds of N down up front. His relationship was you added about 25 pounds of N for every inch of rainfall that you got in that, well, let's call it the June 15th to July 15th uh, window. I know that you're thinking and the wheels are turning on rainfall as you're selecting rate. Tell us a little bit about last year. You had a lot of rainfall down through here. Did you, did you drive your nitrogen rates higher because of rainfall? And if you did, what do you... What do you what do you think you learned from it all? Yeah, so last year I guess the the tap turned on right about this time of year, like the end of June. We got a four inch rain overnight, and then uh, that followed the next ten days with about another six or eight inches of rain. It was just unbelievable how much rain we got that time frame last year. 
Um, I don't know, we had a couple conversations about that and, and I did start pushing nitrogen rates quite a bit higher than I normally would to the 230, 240 range. Um, and I did a fair bit of testing up to about 270 pounds applied and I wish I had gone above 300 because it was still showing a showing response at that All rate. Right. So, so the so there's something to it. Yeah. So so rainfall is a is a component that you're going to try to work with in terms of your of your end rate selection in this late side dress deal. Yeah, absolutely. We've had uh, we've had about three inches of rain in the last three weeks, I guess, right where we're at here. So yeah, I'll probably be running uh, at least 200 pounds here. So right, yeah. and. Uh, I see you do a really nice job of laying that band down beside the row, uh, but you're only on one band per row. That you're you're confident that that's working for you? Yeah, if you look at the if you look at the video there, uh, you'll see that the nitrogen's kind of dispersed on either side of the uh, corn plant as it's going through the through the field. So I really don't think that that having a drop on each side of the row is is critical whatsoever. So. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned rates. Uh, you're, you're doing a bit of testing, a bit of, uh, comparing of, of rates. Uh, is that sort of normal for you to try to evaluate where you're at? Yeah. If you don't test, you really don't know at the end of the year, how you did in terms of, uh, the agronomic decisions that you made. So pretty much every field is a test plot in some form or another, right? Yeah. So, uh, in this field, this pass here was say 150 pounds applied. The next pass is a hundred the pass over there is 80 and it's just all the way across the field but the bulk of it is still the is tied back to that rain fed uh yeah. the rainfall yeah, model yeah. so yeah well I, I like to think that even in even in my own world if we don't do some plots to to learn a few things if we're no smarter next june than we are this june when it comes to nitrogen management uh that's not a good sign right no it kind of leaves you in the dark and uh when you've got nitrogen that you know you're talking to buck buck 20 a buck 30 a buck 40 a pound uh you know you over apply by 15 pounds let's say you're on a thousand acres of corn it starts adding up starts so. adding up hey mike yeah. some really nice stuff you're doing here thanks for being with us today my pleasure well there you have it some great insights from mike um greg i want to talk about you know rainfall here you know um mike has really got an interesting strategy about hey, how he employs rainfall information in this application yep so we always have lots of good university research going on, and a fair bit of it sometimes gets ignored by growers. This is a situation where some of that work by Bill Dean out of the University of Guelph, which really made a fairly simple relationship. The more rain you get, the more nitrogen you should add. Uh, Mike's embraced that, and I think, he's, I think he's making it work. Nothing's ever perfect in the nitrogen world, but making some incremental improvements year to year, I think is really a nice lesson that we pulled out of Mike today. Let's talk about timing here. I mean, really, you know, from Mike's perspective, really impacts logistics and how we get this done in the season. Yeah, so what's happened with this high clearance dribble band UAN application is that he's moved that right out of his weed control spray window. So everything's looked after from a weed control perspective. He's not worrying, wow, I really should get in there and knife some nitrogen into that field before he's even got the weed control looked after. So pushing it back has allowed him to sort of focus on weed control, not worrying because he's got high clearance options for later in the season for nitrogen. Yeah. Well, another great episode, Greg. We will see you next time on The Sharp Edge.